Hey everybody. In this video we're going to get into accumulation functions. This is a very important application of the definite integral. It's going to lead us directly into the first fundamental theorem of calculus. So first a formal definition. Um, an accumulation function is just one that looks like this. It's a definite integral where we have a constant in the lower in limit of integration and the independent variable x is in the upper limit of integration. Um, this gets a lot clearer when we see a picture. So here I've graphed a function um, y equals f of t and g of x is just representing the area under that graph from a left-hand endpoint of t equals a to a right-hand endpoint of t equals x. And you're supposed to imagine x getting larger or smaller and the amount of area under that graph changing. In particular, as x gets larger, you picture the area under that graph accumulating. Let's work through an example. Let's stick with that same graph, y equals f of t, and let's compute g of x at different values, starting with g of 1. So when I look at the area under this graph between t equals 1 and t equals 1, I get no area. So g of 1 is 0. Let's move on to g of 2. So the integral from 1 to 2, f of t dt, is this shaded region. It's a trapezoid. Um, and you can compute that using the formula 1 half b1 plus b2 times h. Or you can see that you have a 1 by 1 square and a 1 by 1 isosceles right triangle. So you get 1.5. Now, when we do g of 3, we can do this from scratch. Um, or we can just view it as adding the extra two units to the area that we already had. In other words, adding the area between t equals 2 and t equals 3. Overall, we're going to get 3.5. Similarly, when we compute g of 4, we need two more units of area, 5.5. g of 5 will be two more than that. And g of 6 will be one more than that, because we've added in a new triangle with height 2 and base 1. Now, when we go from 6 to 7, we're not contributing any new area. g of 7 and g of 6 should be the same. And when we do g of 8, when we go from 7 to 8, now we're adding in some area below the horizontal axis, so it's actually going to have a negative contribution. We have a triangle of width 1 and height 1 half, so overall the area is going to be 1 quarter. Here it's negative, so we subtract 1 quarter. Finally, going from 8 to 9, we lose another 3 quarters of a unit of area. Okay, great. So we've got a little table of values. Um, x, g of x, we can just make a graph out of this. There it is. I've literally just connected dots um, here, and this gives us a rough shape of the graph. One interesting thing to do, though, is to plot this graph, y equals g of x, on the same axes as the function we already had. And so here I'm writing f as a function of x, so I can put them on the same axes something jumps out right away. Whenever g of x is increasing, f of x is positive. That makes sense if you imagine um, g as being an accumulation function of f. Whenever f is positive, you're accumulating more area, so g should be increasing. Similarly, g is going to be decreasing whenever f is negative, because you're accumulating negative area. Finally, we notice that on that interval where um, f of x is, is 0, g of x is constant. So this leads to a very natural conjecture that g of x is an antiderivative of f of x, or to say it differently, that f of x is a derivative of g of x. So that's something that we'll want to explore next.